Welcome to another edition of CHP Talks. We are here talking today about Aaron O'Toole, uh, about cancel culture, and about how that relates to Derek Sloan. Member of Parliament, was a Conservative Party Member of Parliament, not anymore. Rod, do you want to set the stage for us? Well, boy, things change fast. Uh, especially in these days, I think uh, so much has happened south of the border and, and here in Canada. Um, with, with the COVID and various uh, aspects of the cancel culture. But we learned the night before last that uh, Derek Sloan was, that Aaron O'Toole had made moves to try to kick Derek Sloan out of the Conservative caucus. And we weren't sure how that was going to go. It was obvious that uh, Aaron O'Toole, leader of the Conservative Party, was not able to do that on his own. He actually needed the support of the other members or at least 50% plus one of the other members of the parliament. And today that was achieved. And so we're uh, sorry to, uh, to see that so many of these members of parliament who were elected as conservatives, if you think of that in the, the true term conservative, have said that they don't want Derek Sloan to serve with them under their banner uh, because of his uh, socially conservative views. Right. Now, it didn't. Now, that's the way we see it in terms of where things have started. Um, he's made socially conservative statements. He's obviously been a strong social conservative. We applaud him for his pro life views. Um, but he wasn't kicked out. Uh, he was kicked out under a different auspices. Um, he was he was kicked out for a different accusation, and um, it's well, it's it's pretty crazy. He stood up against it, and rightly so, because it's not a true accusation. Um, Rod, do you well, want to sort of yeah set this? It was actually a very flimsy excuse uh, to get rid of him, but I we I do think that it was because of his socially conservative views and the uh, way he has expressed that in the parliament, which in, from our point of view has been nothing but uh, noble, courageous and upright. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he received a contribution out of some, as I understand, 13,000 contributions that came into his uh, leadership campaign uh, from a man named, uh, was it uh, Frederick Paul Fromm? And apparently uh, some people know Paul Fromm as a neo-Nazi or a white supremacist, you know, some uh, kind of a philosophy that we don't endorse. And I know that Derek Sloan doesn't endorse it, uh, but, but he uh, defended himself in the media or on his Facebook there yesterday by saying that um, uh, he never, you know, realized who this donation had come from, $131. Um, and they also some of it went to the Conservative Party, 10% went to the Conservative Party, and they had every chance to figure out who this guy was. Um, but anyway, regardless, uh, it's a very uh, uh, unreasonable accusation that because someone sent some money during the leadership uh, campaign that somehow that means that Derek Sloan shares this person's views on you know whatever social issues there are. Uh, nothing could be further from the truth, and it certainly was an unfair accusation. It looked like they were grasping at straws, trying to find some reason to kick him out. And in fact, some of the MPs who commented. Uh, after, uh, you know, this became obvious they were going to have an opportunity to vote on this, some of them distanced themselves from Derek Sloan and said, well, this is just uh, a small point. It's accumulation of uh, offenses on his part from their point of view, which those offenses are simply speaking his opinion on some important issues, which we don't disagree with, actually. Yeah, and I, I just... You know, it's it's really um, you know sad to be falsely accused. Um, but in today's culture and environment, to be accused um, 
to be smeared the way that he was, um, not only with the false accusation, but with the, uh, the innuendo that goes with it. Um, it's, you know, it's really underhanded. Um, it not only makes, uh, you know, takes him out of the Conservative Party caucus, but it also, um, you know, will make people wonder in the future what, you know, what his views are. And that's, you know, that is very underhanded. So at this point, basically, Derek is being smeared as potentially being a racist. Um, that nothing could be further from the truth, right? Well, he's in a multiracial marriage, so to accuse him of being a racist is uh, like it's it doesn't even make any sense. Um, no. And the other point that I uh, would like people to consider. It's not that he sent money to a person who represented a racist point of view. That person, unbeknownst to Derek, sent money to him. Uh, yeah. And uh, it would be different if he was, you know, maybe sitting down at his table and uh, bending his ear and saying, oh, I've given you money. Now you better do what I say. But uh, this is just essentially similar to an anonymous contribution. Uh, he received so many contributions and and, uh, you know, he just didn't have time to follow. You wouldn't expect a leadership uh, candidate of any sort to follow up on every single contribution and, and look into the background of every donor. But we understand he's also given the money back at this point, oh, just to make sure, sure that yeah. it's absolutely clear. And, yeah. um, you know, um, but and it's and I mean, like, it's one hundred and thirty. It's not it's not like a maximum donation either. Right. Like it's. Mm -hmm. No. For the party to pick him on this shows that they have um, nothing real to hold against him. They're just trying to get him on whatever they can so that they'd have an excuse to kick him out. And it's just sad that it's so mean-spirited. They were looking for something. And, you know, the media has piled on. I've seen a few articles already. And the media certainly is using the opportunity to bring up his uh, some of his uh, policy positions uh, from the past and to question whether he belongs, you know, in parliament or in the conservative caucus, Justin Trudeau, uh, seems happy about this decision. So, uh, that should be a red flag for any social conservative right now that if, uh, if it makes Justin Trudeau happy, why, uh, you know, what, why does it make him happy? What, what is he trying to accomplish other than a, a uniform, uh, House of Commons with nobody dissenting from his ultra-liberal policies. So Aaron O'Toole is happy now and Justin Trudeau is happy now. So uh, what, what does that tell you, right? But Aaron O'Toole was one of these guys who was speaking up against cancel culture, right? And um, now he's engaging in it. So it's a, it's a huge double standard and um, it's hypocrisy. Um, but uh, he's, he's just you know, jumping right into that. And, and I, I think it's reasonable to say that it's quite divisive. Um, even if few or, if, or if maybe no and, um, MPs uh, come out to defend Derek Sloan, there's probably some that are sickened um, by his treatment and, uh, you know, probably chilled in terms of what they're going to speak out against in the future. Yeah, party discipline when it comes to things like this uh, is uh, not a pretty picture. Um, and people are going to have to draw their lines. And, and some people, I, I know it's going to happen because I've seen it happen before. Uh, they will be cutting their ties with Derek Sloan. They don't want to be associated with him. Um, but uh, we certainly appreciate that he has been willing to stand up. He's been willing to, to take the flack. Uh, and respectfully present a point of view um, many times that is contrary to uh, the mainstream media and so on. And it's not the first time that um, right. a member of the Conservative Caucus has been uh, kicked out. Uh, we have a few examples. Uh, one of them here is uh, Larry Spencer, who uh, served actually uh, before the uh, reform in the transition period of Reform Party, Alliance Party, when Stephen Harper had become the leader, but they were not yet in government. And uh, Larry Spencer was at a, a fall fair somewhere, and he made some comments in an interview uh, about, you know, family values and traditional marriage, you know, things that he supported. 
and that was taken to, you know, he was uh, basically vilified for those remarks because it didn't fit with the progressive left-wing uh, culture that is, uh, you know, the, the media spin that's been dominating. And, and he was kicked out of that caucus and he didn't have a chance to defend himself either. Like he didn't have a chance to represent his uh, views or words to his fellow caucus members. He was just out. Later on, <laughs> it was a benefit to us. Later on, he became the president, not the leader, but the president of the Christian Heritage Party of Canada and served in that role for a couple of years. And we really appreciated uh, having uh, his wisdom in our uh, leadership team. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the, uh, another example that comes to my mind of, uh, of cancel culture, um, Andrew Scheer, um, some of his leadership rivals were soon not, you know, members of parliament anymore, at least not in the conservative caucus through one way or another. And, and, um, and provincially in Ontario, um, social conservatives will recognize the name Tanya Granick allen uh, She ran uh, for the... Uh, Conservative Party leadership provincially, and soon after that, um, the current leader um, and current premier, Doug Ford, pushed her out, um, and she has strong social conservative views. So this is not a new thing. This is a worrying trend in the Conservative Party. Um, this cancel culture is something we might associate with the left, but it is um, pretty strong in what might be known as the right, although it's leaving us reasons to doubt. <clears throat> kind of raises the whole question of moral compromise in uh, mm -hmm. political realm, in, especially in within political parties. Uh, people sometimes have the view, it seems to be a very common way of thinking, oh, we can't uh, take someone with strong views, we have to take someone who's middle of the road. And that was how Aaron O'Toole presented himself. Um, and he said he wanted all kinds of uh, conservatives in his party, uh, the whole spectrum. But when it comes to strong views, um, pro-life and, and pro-traditional family values and apparently pro-freedom, uh, I guess uh, it makes him too uncomfortable. And he has to sort of uh, clear the ranks. But I, I think this is going to be very damaging to the Conservative Party. And, and so for those who have worked long and hard within a Conservative Party to bring social uh, conservative values there and to try to get the best people elected who will represent life, family and freedom, it must be a tough day for them to see, uh, you know, a good man like Derek Sloan vilified and booted out a caucus. I don't think it's going to help the Conservative Party. The people who are attacking them from the outside, the, the left-wing media and left-wing uh, voters, they're not going to vote for them anyway. They're just going to attack anyway. So now the party is seen as obviously divided, uh, which we knew already that it was, but that uh, division is now on public display and I yeah. think Mr. O'Toole. The media will have a heyday. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, Mr. O'Toole will uh, regret this decision. Yeah. Well, I guess maybe that's a good place to just put in an invitation. <laughs> if you're not a member of CHP, uh, please do consider um, taking us a, another look, a closer look at CHP, what we stand for. Maybe you will find a political home with us if you're not already a member. Um, CHP stands up as a uh, conscience in this country, and I feel that uh, Derek Sloan also stands up as a conscience, and I think that's partially why he is um, hated, especially by the left, by the Red Tories, and, um, and that's why both Justin Trudeau and Aaron O'Toole are happy about his removal. Yeah. So we certainly wish Derek and his family well. Uh, we hope he will continue to stand strong and uh, not be beaten down. Uh, we appreciate that he has not gone groveling uh, and apologetically, uh, you know, uh, to the leadership, begging them to keep him in the caucus because uh, he did nothing wrong. And uh, so I think his his strength of character is shown even in this uh, adversity that he's been facing. And if he continues to stand strong like that, I know that he's going to continue to have a, a good effect in the House of Parliament. 
Uh, yes, so we have he's to... not going down without a fight, and neither should he. Um, and I think that many uh, listeners and viewers might be wondering what he's going to do next. Uh, we certainly are. Um, but I really want to encourage all of you to pray for him, um, pray for his family, his, uh, his children, um, their young children, and this is certainly a difficult and a stressful time for them. So let's be praying for um, his family, himself, especially uh, as he considers what his future will be. Um, pray that he will have wisdom to know what steps to take next. And uh, let's leave that in God's hands and trust that uh, he'll do the right thing. Um, and that Derek will, uh, will also do the right thing. And pray for our yeah, nation. Right, pray, pray for uh, even for Justin Trudeau. I know many of us uh, have a lot of um, problems, uh, you know, uh, kind of adjusting or knowing how, how to interact with some of his decisions. Uh, you know, we certainly feel that he's going in the wrong direction in many areas, but uh, we do need to pray for our leaders. And also down south, yes. today was uh, yes. inauguration day for a new administration in the U.S. Um, it could be trouble for social conservatives, but pray for the leadership in the United States and in Canada that, that we would find our way back to a, a moral philosophy that would uh, su you know, strengthen um, families and strengthen our uh, hold on freedom in both of our countries. That's a very good point. Yeah, praying for our neighbors to the south, and uh, especially in a time of transition like this, um, very important. And uh, in our own troubled situations in our provinces, in the lockdowns that we face, certainly if it, uh, if whatever it takes, I guess, sometimes to get us to that point is what God uses. And uh, we, we can't question his wisdom and his um, plans, but we certainly want to commit our ways to him. So thank you all for listening, and we hope you'll join us again next week for another edition of CHP Talks. God bless you all. Thank you all. God bless you.